Hey guys, it's Taco Die, and this is a video about setting up and using a Bluetooth controller with Battle of Titans. Here I've got the uh, Steel Series Stratus Duo Bluetooth controller. Uh, the buttons come automatically mapped, pretty much. Um, your joysticks uh, work appropriately. The triggers L2, L1, R2, and R1 are all mapped to a different weapon. Your left weapon, your right weapon, your top weapon, and your special. Uh, the X button or the A button as you know it, uh, the bottom most of the four is your jump and sprint button and then the Y or triangle the top most is used on a cormorant to uh, get into flight mode on iOS devices, uh, the D-pad up and down works as your cormorant um, up and down buttons as well. A couple other controllers that work well with Bot automatically are the um, Xbox and the PlayStation 5 Bluetooth controllers. Uh, they work pretty much the same as this one. I also went ahead and bought the phone holder attachment from the same company that makes this controller uh, so it fits perfectly and it's also um, you know just ergonomic and, and good to use with the controller. So I'm just going to go ahead and reset all of my control settings back to just what they originally are so um, so everybody can just, we can just start from scratch when it comes to learning how to use this. So I'm just going to reset everything. Um, these are my current uh, sensitivities for uh, my aiming. We'll talk about kind of how I came to this and why I use this. Alright, so it's, uh, everything's reset. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and start with a, um, a bipedal bot with sprint. Um, let's go ahead and get to some space here. You'll see that as I move around, uh, you won't see any movement from the joystick, so it's not necessary to be on the screen there. Um, so here's the sensitivities that I have here. Uh, how I got to the sensitivity is I don't want it to move too fast that it moves faster than your turret can actually move. Um, so super high sensitivity, your turret can't even move that fast. So there's no point in having it that. So I kind of brought it down to a speed that I know works well. Uh, if you go too slow, you can aim really well, but uh, obviously this wouldn't be very effective in battle. So the middle happens to work for me on different devices. It's gonna work differently. Um, the middle works for me. It lets me turn my tower pretty much right at this, right at the max speed that my turret can turn. And but it's also slow enough that it makes it easy for fine tune aiming. So now we're going to go ahead and see what buttons I actually need to keep on screen. As I fire each of my weapons, you'll notice that there's no response on screen, so I don't need those. I'll hit reload. You see, there's no response on screen, so I don't need that. Um, there is a response on screen for my cooldown for my sprint, so I'm going to need that. And then when I shoot my special, I can always just see my cooldown on the backpack of my robot. So I won't need that, and obviously I won't need my joysticks. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my controls. I'm going to select group setting, selection, and then I'm going to select all the buttons that I don't need. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and turn their opacity to zero, 100% to zero. And that's going to hide all of this unnecessary stuff from my screen. But for the sprint, not only do I want to be able to see it, I also want it large because on these controllers, uh, you have to press and hold sprint in order for your robot to sprint if you use it on your controller. But if you tap it on screen, it'll stay on until you tap it off. And when you're pressing and holding it, you that same finger can't be used to either use a joystick or a trigger button, depending on which finger that you use. So you'll notice that when I hold it, I run around I can't turn my tower till after I let go. So if I press and hold it, I can, my thumb's on it, so now I can't use my joystick. So I want it nice and large, so that way I can just tap on it with perhaps my thumb or my pointer finger if it's on this holder. I can just tap on it real quick, and then I can shoot and fire and all that stuff, and then I can either press on the controller or tap on the screen to turn it off. So now we're going to go ahead and go over how this applies to a jumping robot. This is a Mangler Nelly here, and you'll see that the 
jump icon didn't get any larger that's because in your controls there the jump icon the sprint icon and the cormorant go into flight icon are actually all different ones you have to set them all up individually um, and I only need to see it so that way I can see the cooldown I don't ever actually need to press it because I can tap X on my controller and I don't need to hold it it's uh, just hit once and then activate you'll see that I'm firing each weapon just one at a time because you can with the controller you can hit L2 or R2 and fire each one individually if you want and what's great about the controller joystick is that way well, you don't have to do a bunch of individual swipes. You can jump and then just hold the joystick and make a big 360 check for lights while you reload. And at the end of the jump cooldown, your weapons are ready to go. The controller also goes just great with lights, especially for all the close quarters combat that you go. Uh, as you can see, I don't need a cooldown special uh, icon from being used because I can see it on the back, you know, on the backpack of my robot. So that's another thing you just don't need on your graphical user interface there, you know. So you just have this huge screen and you're just able to see so much and experience the game so much better. Um, you're gonna wanna, if you use a bunch of lights, you're gonna wanna match that uh, axis sensitivity to, uh, so that, to your turn radius. That way whenever you're doing this, it's a little bit more seamless um, and you're not, you don't get off target quite as much. But the controller really does just let this be um, a fantastic experience for light users. Instead of just a bunch of different swipes, constant, you know, just um, in intervals turning, it's just a seamless rotation as you, um, you know, as you play the game and this close quarter stuff as you turn around your opponent. Um, it really is a good time. Uh, thanks, guys, for watching. Uh, I really hope that you enjoy this. I hope this is educational. I hope this asked or answered a lot of your questions. I didn't pull out the cormorant yet, Sam. on it because it's just not quite as uh, user friendly, unfortunately. Although the rest of the bots do use pretty well. If you choose to use control of the cormorant, you're going to need some very specific practice with it. But it's not impossible. It's definitely not impossible. You can. Um, you can definitely. Uh, get out of some of your old habits and, and start to use this. What I would suggest if you do choose to use a controller is get in custom game mode, go against some AI and practice for a while because you're going to have all the tactics knowledge that you're used to using but you're not going to quite have the muscle memory to, uh, to apply any of them. Um, because I mean you've played hundreds or even thousands of games already using your phone or whatever input device you're already using so you're going to have to get a lot of that, uh, a lot of that back through some practice if you choose to use a different device to play the game. So do get used to that, even if it is um, a little rough in the beginning. Uh, kind of stick with it, and I think you'll have a lot better experience. The game's just going through a, lot, a whole bunch of controls issues right now, and um, the controller doesn't put any input to the screen, and so it bypasses all those glitches and all those problems that we're having. Um, all right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope this video helped. If you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comments, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.